Un pintor nos prometió un cuadro. Ahora, en New England, sé que ha muerto. Sentí, como otras veces, la tristeza de comprender que somos como un sueño. Pensé en el hombre y en el cuadro perdidos. Solo los dioses pueden prometer porque son inmortales. Pensé en un lugar prefijado que la tela no ocupará. Pensé después, si estuviera ahí, sería con el tiempo una cosa más, una cosa, una de las vanidades o hábitos de la casa. Ahora es ilimitada, incesante, capaz de cualquier forma y cualquier color y no atada a ninguno. Existe de algún modo. Vivirá y crecerá como una música y estará conmigo hasta el fin. Gracias, Jorge Larco. También los hombres pueden prometer porque en la promesa hay algo inmortal. So the film was called uh, A Winter's Tale and it was partly inspired by this uh, by this uh, The film was called A Winter's Tale and one of the inspirations for the director was a short text by Borges called The Unending Gift. It talks about an artist who dies just before starting a painting he promised to the author. But in the film, the painter doesn't die. Are you okay? After the stroke, he becomes disabled, a whole side of his body paralyzed, and he cannot paint anymore. He hires the young model that saved his life to work for him, assisting with office and household work. At first, he keeps his distance, but with time, they end up becoming friends. And that friendship inspires the artist to attempt to finish his last painting. In early 2020, the director had come to Germany to teach a short course and he ended up stuck in the country for many months more due to the pandemic. And not in Berlin or Munich, but in a quiet, decaying town in former Eastern Germany. Yeah, it wasn't very, like, very lively town. You didn't, didn't see a lot of people in the street, and that was before, before the pandemic. One day in summer, as the pandemic appeared to subside, an advertisement for a life drawing course called his attention. Uh, can I see your drawing? Yes. Wow, you're very talented. Are you a professional artist? I'm a painter. Nice. Hmm. And what do you do? I'm a filmmaker. Interesting. Yes, in fact, I just had a new idea for... Oh! Ah. Ah. Really? I think I wrote the script that same night, and only later I remembered the poem by Borges, and I looked it up. Borges, wow! Uh, do you want to read the script I just wrote for my new movie? Sure. Send it to me by email. Cool! Uh, and there's a vernissage next week. Would you like to...? No. Sorry. <laughs> I'm married. Bye! Oh. No, wait! <sighs> After finishing the script, he started to prepare the production. Camera, actors, what else? Ah, producer. Yeah, we were the most important for us in the project. I said, yeah, we can support this project, even if there's no money for it. This is actually the location of the movie. The, I guess the birds were going to be a little bit of a problem there. But they were actually part, part of the story. And this is the actual studio of the, of the art director of the movie. Io. She said that she didn't want to work in a movie anymore. I mean, she, she, she would still work 
uh, creating some props and all the things that I needed, but she wouldn't be like the main art director. Well, first she didn't like the script very much. Patetico, minchia buffone. And also we had some disagreements. Ow, 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 no, stop, please. Ah! And then there was the lockdown thing, you know? It was like a plane going like... The general lockdown has been declared in all of Germany. It's possible to travel. Yeah. But not for more than 15 kilometers. Nein. It's allowed to work. Yeah. But not in film productions. Nein. Scheiße, ich kann nicht. Finding the actor was easy. Hello, can we talk? Ich bekam einen Anruf von dem Regisseur und äh, erzählte mir die Geschichte und ich habe die Geschichte ziemlich sofort sehr in interessant gefunden. But the actress, yes, a short movie. No, no payment, sorry. Uh, and when I had almost lost hope, I got a surprising call. Hello. I've heard that you were looking for an actress. Yes, I'm free. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh. The director had his cast and crew completed. But since he no longer had an art director, who would create the painting needed for the crucial scene in the movie? I read your script. I know someone who could do the painting for the movie. Really? Xerox, a friend of mine. I have to go. Wait. Bye. Hello, how are you? Hi. Uh, so did you talk to Zora? No, sorry, I couldn't find him. But I thought perhaps I could paint it myself? Um, uh, well, I don't know. Why not? Um, I'll call you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Bye. Oh, your atelier is very cozy. Thanks, but could you please not move? I'm trying to capture this glorious sunset light. Oh, sorry. Secondo me, è una pittrice fasulla. Io avessi chiamato Nausea. Are you sure we can film next week? Yeah, uh, the other week, next month. Oh, it was so crazy. Every day there was something new. You couldn't plan anything. The general lockdown has been lifted yeah. and changed to an extra Nein. hard lockdown. Scheiße. Tut mir leid, das geht nicht mehr. Yeah, the corona rules got worse and worse. And also people in the crew had very different reactions to them. Everybody on the film set must wear a mask and have a test. Why they forced in this way this vaccination? People will fight back. The story took place in winter and required heavy snow. At first, the director was concerned that it wouldn't snow much that year, but it did. In fact, from December until February, it snowed almost every week. And yet, filming was somehow never possible. All the director could do was sit and watch through the window as the snow kept falling outside. One day in mid-February, something finally happened. The actors suddenly had time, the crew was available, the lockdown rules were relaxed, and weather was ideal. Okay. The external snow scenes were filmed over two days. Camera left. Camera set. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, action. Those remain the only scenes ever filmed for the movie. Ach so. Ja, macht ihr mich keine Sorgen. Ich habe jemanden für die Zeit. Frohe Weihnachten! Weihnachten! Luck, however, did not last. Non mi sento bene per niente. 
spero che non sia <coughs> sto minchia di corona no bella madre Concerned with the disease of a dear friend, a world gone insane with crazy rules, and facing possible deportation, the director did something that he hadn't done in a long time. He lit a candle and he prayed. He prayed to Saint Magdalene, he prayed to Saint Gemma Galgani, and he prayed, of course, to the Virgin Mary. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. One of the most important props in the film was a statue of the Virgin Mary. Designed by the art director and based on a medieval image, the statue, like the film, remained unfinished. Whether because of the prayers or for other reasons, the situation eventually improved. It was an terrible experience. You know who was eating in the hospital? A scum. Things seem to be looking up again. Even the painting was finally ready. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Ta-da! Here it is. Um, well... Huh? Could you perhaps tone down the birds there a little bit? I knew it. You hate it. <laughs> no, no, it's good. No, I like it. It's really good. Mm. It wasn't a bad painting, I just didn't think it was something that the character in my movie would paint, you know? But perhaps I was insensitive. I just sent her an email saying, I don't need your painting anymore. And I just hoped that she wouldn't take it so badly. No. No. And then I had to call someone else. Hello? They know when I caught the ducks, it gives something to eat. <laughs> the director called for a painting, for a film, I think was the relationship with the painter and the, this model. I hope the, the painting transport these emotions. Hope and love, no, no. I never saw the first painting. I don't know what the picture, I don't know. What happened? He just said he doesn't want my painting anymore. And all my work for nothing. Oh la la, <laughs> ce salaud. Hello? Listen, if the painting is not back in, I'm out. <laughs> Perhaps I'm just not very talented. Me no, you are very talented. Come, come. In the last week before shooting, the director had trouble sleeping. All right, Mr. Demille, I'm ready for my close-up. The last week before shooting was tense. On the surface, everything appeared to have been solved, but I guess everyone was a little bit on edge, you know? And we needed a prop gun for a scene, so I asked the producer. And it's funny, his email reply, sent to all the crew, he added at the end. Yes, I will bring a gun. And I remember the assistant came to me very worried and said, Um, director, why is the producer bringing a gun? Uh -huh. Hi, everything's ready. We start tomorrow at 7, okay? I'm out. <sighs> Hello? What? One day before the shooting, the director calls and says, All cancelled. And I was like, What? And just like that, everything was over. The filming equipment remained at the location for months, in wait for a propitious time. But when the shooting day finally arrived, the crew could just come to carry it away.
For a long time, the director blamed others for his failures. And like so many others before him, he fell prey to that all too human frailty, vanity. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. It's a shame, it's a shame. We had great actors, a great crew, and it ended because of what I feel was just a communication problem. And I think everyone regretted it later. No. Hmm. Jede Position äh, ist für mich irgendwo verständlich. Also ich denke schon, dass es daran liegt, dass äh, die Kommunikation nicht mehr funktioniert hat. Und auch wenn wir kein Geld für das Projekt haben und dann noch Corona dazu. Also In his quest to do things his own way, right or wrong, he ended up alienating or disappointing everyone. even himself. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. In the original version of the script, the artist shoots himself after finishing his painting. The last scene shows his dead body lying in front of the finished canvas while the snow falls gently outside. But there was also another version, in which the suicide attempt fails, the painter decides to continue living and painting, and the story ends in spring. In this version, the last scene shows the statue of the Virgin Mary in a garden, among flowers and birds. Birds not in a cage, but free. In my last interview with the director, which unfortunately was not recorded, he told me that, if he tried to make the film again, he would create yet another ending. He would end the film, like in the first version, with the image of snow falling and with the painting sitting on the easel. Only that there would be no painting, just a blank canvas. He also said, perhaps even an empty canvas says too much and I could just end the film with a black screen. So everything was left to the imagination. A black screen, 
a film without any image, and no sound either, or perhaps only the sound of birds. Perhaps, he said, that is the only possible ending for an unending film. Finisce così alla scossaccia minchia. No cantes, hermano, no cantes, que Moscú está cubierto de nieve y los lobos aullan de hambre. No cantes que Olga no vuelve, aunque el sol nuevamente ilumine, aunque siga cayendo la nieve, aunque el sol nuevamente ilumine, aunque siga cayendo la nieve. Rumbo a Siberia mañana, Saldrá la caravana ¿Quién sabe si el sol Querrá iluminar nuestra marcha de horror Mientras el Moscú Tal vez a tu amor se entregó No cantes, hermano No cantes, por Dios Unidos por crueles cadenas por la estepa mil leguas haremos, caminando con rumbo a Siberia. No cantes que ruda de nada, ya Moscú está cubierto de nieve, y la nieve ha llegado a mi alma. Ya Moscú está cubierto de nieve, y la nieve ha llegado a mi alma.